Now, North Kingstown is the home of the iconic Seabees. Navy Construction Battalions were formed at the beginning of World War II. They built the buildings troops lived in, the landing strips planes landed on, and everything in between. Now they have a newly built museum with memories and artifacts of war's past. Check it out. The Navy Seabees' simple motto says it all. We build, we fight. The Seabees were formed during 1942 because the Navy realized that with the attacks going on in the Pacific Theater, you could not have civilians bear arms against a uniformed force. They would be basically considered guerrillas. And if they were captured by the enemy, they would be executed on the spot. So the Navy realized with all the construction necessary in the Pacific Theater to help the island hopping campaign, they needed to come up with a military construction force. Over 325,000 men served with the Seabees in World War II. They would take an island and convert an island to a city. I think we're probably one of the only museums that actually has four of the five original designs of the smaller Quonset hut on display. The Quonset hut was originally designed and tested here from blueprints brought back from the First World War. Over the years, the collection has grown. A lot of it's donations, a lot of it's from my personal collection. I've been collecting memorabilia for probably almost 40 years myself, but a lot of it has been donated by families. The original B logo was created in early January of 1942. Right here, we are very fortunate to have the uniforms, the hats, some of the combat equipment actually from Mr. Frank Iafredi, the creator of the CB logo. The uniform behind you is actually, the, it's, it's a funny story, I actually won this uniform off of eBay. You did really? Yes. And I wanted to get a captain's jacket in the Civil Engineer Corps. Well, on the inside of this jacket is the name R.V. Miller. R.V. Miller, Raymond V. Miller, was the public works officer in Newport that came over here, was given the orders by Admiral Ben Morrell to build this entire base. This is incredible. This is probably another one of our most prized possessions here. This goes back to me explaining that nobody really knows that the significant role that the Seabees played at the invasion of D-Day. This flag is off a rhino ferry, and I have several photos in here of what a rhino ferry is, and it's basically the pontoon boxes that are all bolted together. Nobody would believe us that these were, were suitcases. It was made out of scrap lumber. You find the old three by five black and white photos. So I took one and I enlarged it. And what are these guys carrying going up a gangplank? That's what, that's what They're it is. They're carrying all those suitcases. Those the truck we actually had gotten years ago from the Air Museum, it's a World War II vintage two and a half ton truck. The museum holds many memories and emotions for our veterans. And I think a lot of people in Rhode Island don't really realize everything that happened within the 3,200 acres that was developed here. And sometimes it's bittersweet because you'll have some of the veterans that come back and have never spoken about the war, whether it be World War II or Vietnam, and they'll come back here and all of a sudden they'll open up. And they'll tell stories to their families that their families have never heard. And I've actually had wives of some of these veterans come up and thank me for preserving this stuff because their husbands have never spoken about it since the war. Now, wow. really, it really is a great place, and, and what a lot of people don't realize is up until 1972, it was just men were part of the Seabees. After 1972, then women uh, were able to join the Seabees, mm -hmm. and, and really, without, without these folks, when when troops have to would have to be moved and have to go to different locations, these were the folks who were building, I mean, you had to know a little bit about Everything. everything you had to know about plumbing electrical work building stuff wow. a little bit about everything to to put this together it really is remarkable and the amount of items that right. they've collected over the years and i can't believe that jacket off i know. Of ebay and it just, like we said it was it's kind of meant to it be it was meant to be it yeah. really was and and also he was also saying all of the things that obviously we don't know that would go on down down at the base down there right and all of the training that happened for all of the wars and all of the things that mm -hmm. were built down there it really is an incredible place now if you love this stuff and just want to go down and honor these folks this yeah. sunday november 11th they're going to be welcoming home the iconic cb that folks pass by all the time it has actually been out for repairs, actually getting a paint job and a little bit of a facelift. The open house happens from 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. with a flag ceremony and the big unveiling of the bee at noontime. And more great stuff. Join us for Veterans Voices honoring those who serve Friday at 6.30 on Fox Providence. We're going to take a look at more stories about local veterans, including that recent honor flight to Washington, D.C. that Mike did. And there's actually a couple of different pieces in there. And
that just incredibly well done mm -hmm. and so uh, so moving to honor the folks who serve our country and have served in the past and continue to do so. So absolutely. Tune Looking forward that. to yep. that.